So this video will show you how to create a triangular box. Uh, the net up here is obviously of a rectangular box. Um, we have the base and also we have the lid. Uh, the reason that there are red lines and there are black lines is because the red lines are um, engraved by the laser cutter, essentially scoring your, your work or your card. And the black lines are symbolic symbolic of cutting so the laser cutter will cut those lines and um, you need to decide the dimensions of yours but I will show you how to create a triangular shaped net so first of all you need a new slide a uh, new document either uh, we're going to go with a width of 900 and a height of 600 and the reason for that is there is that is the measurements of the laser cutter bed and um, if you go any bigger than that we are not going to be able to fit it on so click OK and there we go and um, so the first thing we're going to use is we are going to use the polygon tool to create our sides so let's go with three sides and um, we want a radius so that is how far from the center out we're going to go and um, I'm going to put in I want it to be 180 and that should be my there we go this is good for equilateral triangles if yours is slightly different you are going to have to move these points and um, now as you can see in um, the previous ones that I've done um, the inner shape is always red so let's make that red now so just go up here and select red you do not want a fill for any of these okay everything has to be no fill the reason for no fill is that the laser cutter will not pick up that area if it has got a fill at all so from there i'm going to start on this side here down here and i'm going to create a sign now first of all i'm just going to draw a straight line and my straight line, I need to know the length of my line and I also want to make sure that it is going to be at the correct right angle. So I'm going to draw my line, the height that I want my box. Now bearing in mind this is the base and I'm going to draw mine at 60 millimetres high. That is how tall I want my box to be. Okay, okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down and make it match up with the intersection there and I'm going to copy it and paste it on the other side and then to join it up I'm going to draw a line, a black line because it's going to form the very outside of my box from one point here to the other point on the opposite side. So there's one point. And we're going to the second point, there we go. Um, now, I need to put this on each of the three sides of my box. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of it, and I'm going to rotate it round at the same time. So I'm going to transform, and I'm going to go to rotate. Now, I want a copy of it. I want to preview it, and I want mine to be... I want to rotate it 120 degrees because that is 360 divided by the three sides. So let's click off preview, click on it again, and we can see that that is right. So we'll click copy, and I'm going to take the whole thing and pop it on the edge here. Um, and then I'm going to replicate that again and for the last remaining side. Oops. Form, rotate, again exactly the same, and a copy. And that should then be able to be put there. Now we need to create the tabs. So to create the tabs, um, I'm just going to uh, draw a new little box to work as a symbol, as a, a, a starting point. Um, I'm going to start off with down here. Now I want a tab that's going to join this part to this part. Now if I want to draw the tab on here, that line therefore can go black. 
And what I'll do is I'll actually do that for every other one now. Let's create that as black and then we don't have to worry about that again. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to draw this little box that I was talking about. Um, I'm going to make it orange and the reason I'm going to make it orange is so that I know that it is something that is just being used for marking. So I'm going to click. I want a width of 15 for this and the height that is the same height as my box, which was 60. Click OK. And I'm going to position this right smack bang on the end of here. Now this is only for marking out purposes, so I'm not actually going to be keeping this. I'm going to zoom in on that. And with a black line, because all of this will be cut the tab, I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to and I'm going to hold shift down because that gives me a 45 degree line. And I'm going to draw it to the half and then I'm going to repeat the process on the bottom. And then finally I'm going to join up those two points. This bit doesn't have to be as precisely accurate as the rest of it. My line is a little bit off. That's not a problem. I'm going to delete my uh, orange box and there we have it. That is my tab. Do not group this, okay? Because the laser cutter doesn't understand grouping. Anything that's grouped will stop the laser cutter working with this at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of those at the same time and I'm going to do the transform rotate again. So let's get a copy of that in and I'm going to position that on there and then I'm going to do exactly the same again so you can actually see this Transform, rotate, 120, copy a bit, and that should mean that it sits on the last one. Got my tabs positioned, and that is my neck for the base of my box. So now that I've got that, I now need to make the lid of my box. Now the lid of my box needs to be larger than the base of my box because of the thickness of the card um, just to allow it to go right over the top. Now the scale that I want to go to is I want to make the, the lid 3% larger than this base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the whole thing and paste it and then move it over now, when I go to object this time, when I go to transform, I'm going to go to scale. Okay? And it wants a uniform scale. I want to scale the whole thing at the same same scale. Now, I've already used it um, previously at 103, and that is exactly what I want, 3%. So we have to call it 103% because it's the 100% of the existing um, drawing plus the 3% of the new one. So, click OK, we don't want to copy, and it should be larger. And um, there we go, that is our box lid and base created. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that none of it has got a fill colour. So if I highlight the whole lot, you should be able to see that there is no fill. It won't know the colour because we've used both black and red, but we'll definitely know that there's no fill. So. The second thing we need to do is check that there is no grouping. So we need to click on object and ungroup. Now we need to do this regardless of whether you grouped anything just in case there's something daft going on there. So if you can ungroup it you need to continue to do so until it is completely ungrouped. But mine won't allow me to ungroup it because I didn't group it in the first instance I would imagine. That's the reason why it won't ungroup. Right, then you need to save it. So save it in your area so let's go to save as uh, okay triangle box 
and I'll just save it. Now the next thing you need to do is you also need to save as a DXF file. That is the sort of file that the laser cutter will understand. It cannot read an illustrated file. So if you go to file and export and then you select on here the DXF file and it can still be the same name. Click save and again and it will come up with a different box on your version okay you'll have a whole load of bullet points much like this one you want to make sure that all of the top options in each of those sections is selected and then hit OK now you've got your Illustrator file and your DXF file and the next step for you to do is to send it send both copies to me so I want the Illustrator file and the DXF file good luck